Fred from Radio, I'm David Martos. This is the 80th edition of the Mostra de Venezia, and uh, we are here with a team, with part of the team of Poor Things. Yorgos Lantimos, director. Hello, Hi. how are you? And Rob Ryan, uh, director of photography. Hello, how are you? Very good. So, this is a pretty um, important day for you. You said in the press conference minutes ago that you were nervous. Um, yeah, why course. is this day so important for you? Well, it's, you know, the moment that we share what we made with the world. And it's been quite a few years that, if you especially count the first time that I read this novel, which was 12 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, it's been a long time uh, in the making. So, and even more so with the people that were worked more closely in order to make it into, into a film, it's been, you know, a few years, and especially with the pandemic and everything that elongated things. Um, that we've been waiting for this, you know, film to go out into the world. And, you know, it's always nerve wracking uh, to just, you know, let it go and uh, to know that that's going to be out there forever for everyone. Um, I don't know what it is exactly, but it's just, yeah. cause, you know, causes nervousness. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, the scope of the film, uh, Robbie, is uh, huge. Uh, you had to, uh, you had to build up uh, many sets from scratch. Um, was that the main challenge of, of poor things, like building up a world? Uh, well, the production designers James and Shona Heath, uh, James Price, and Shona Heath built uh, five cities. Was it England, Lisbon, Alexandria, Hale, Alexandria the boat. Paris, France, the boat. and about yeah. So it's five worlds, and on quite a sort of tight budget in that sort of expansive world so they did an amazing job and i think the the, the world they created is quite uh, a good approach to what yorgos was trying to you know we push toward getting a great sort of um world to create hmm. so i really answered that question have I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah but the main, the scope, we were talking well, about the, the main challenge because if the film is is really big in in many um, well i can only aspects. say from my point of view that it was a very there's a lot of things to light and I've not done that before. So I, I went into a studio and I was like, oh my God, these sets are enormous. How, how do we kind of uh, get enough light? And it was sort in a way it was sort of simple because the lighting was to create a sky. So we, we did that a lot in, in each of the sets, but with the sets being so big, that was an awful lot of lights. So that was quite a shock mm -hmm. to me to how much work that involved. And uh, I guess that's a big scale sort of film. No. Um, the, the film and, and the novel, I suppose I haven't uh, read it, um, talks about uh, having an independent mind against society and, and also about the role of, of women in, in, in that environment, in, in society. Um, were these, these topics the ones that, that um, brought you to the project, uh, your main interest in the, this, this part of the content of the novel? or? or uh, well, in a way, yes, it wasn't direct because, you know, reading something and experiencing something like that, you don't necessarily think about the themes and the topics. And the first thing that grabbed me uh, was the character, Bella's character and exactly what you described, how, you know, she, how free she was and how she gets a, a chance to experience life in a different way, mm -hmm. in her own terms. So, you know, from there... You know, you start to understand those themes that you mentioned, but to me, it was initially this incredible character, uh, which we have never seen before. And of course, what drew me was that kind of uh, uh, revelation that it made about, you know, the people around her, men in particular, but also there's women in the story that, you know, play an important part and show us other aspects of, you know, humanity and, and human behavior. So yeah, on a second on a second uh, stage, I think uh, those themes really uh, resonated with everyone, and uh, yeah, we were very eager to make this film happen. I wanted to ask you both about uh, promoting this film here in Venice without the actors, and particularly without Emma. Um, because the blessing of this film was Emma and the rest of the actors. Uh, that's that's part of being a Hollywood royalty, and you are now. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know the strike is there. So how, how do you feel? How how would you describe these mixed feelings about this? Well, I think I'm representing Emma today, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't look quite like You're her. Our Emma. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry, Emma, if I uh, oh, yeah. don't feel those shoes so well. But yeah, I, I think the strike is. Uh, 
it's obviously happening for a reason and um it's a it is a shame that the actors aren't here because they're phenomenal people to kind of share space with and they are a lot of fun and the thing about this film it is a lot of fun so it's it is feels a little bit strange that they're not here a lot strange that they're not here but uh we we can only do our best i guess and i think yeah i hope that it gets resolved really quickly yeah uh, yeah no it's 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 very disappointing that uh emma cannot be here uh she's also a producer in the film she was very involved from early on she's been waiting for this moment for some time and uh Yes, he's he's devastated to not be able to be here. But of course, you know, there's a reason why this is happening. Unfortunately, it's happening, you know, while we're uh, sharing our film. So, but there's not much we can do about that. Okay, Yorgos Lanthimos and Robbie Ryan, Director of Photography and Director of Poor Things in Competition wow. in Venice. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. This was Thanks. an interview for Fred, the Festival Insider. <laughs>